Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Yoga for the Creative Soul book club gathering on this week as we carry forth through chapter two, the Raja Yoga system of connecting to our creative selves. Raja Yoga, you might know, is the Eightfold Path, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a couple of minutes. Before we get rolling, here comes Lee. It's Lee's birthday today, by the way. Um, we'll mention that as she as she actually arrives here. But um, the hmm, yoga is a 5,000 year old tradition that began in India, began as an oral tradition, um, arose from the Vedas, ancient, ancient works about the nature of reality. And yoga teaches us also about the nature of reality and self. So we're very thankful to the ancient Indian tradition and our access to it now. Also thankful as a settler to be able to live, work, collaborate, create, enjoy life on the lands of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the neutral tribes here along the Grand River. Um, these are the original peoples who also have lived here for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. For, um, for you, I do recommend that you get to know who are the original caretakers of the lands upon which you live, work, create, and enjoy. And if there are ways to support their efforts in continuing to protect our lands, airs, and waterways to join forces with them, I just posted, shared something to my Facebook page about uh, botanical gardens in Tofino that have been reworked as part of IPAC. So teaching of, um, of original traditions out there in British Columbia. Lots of amazing endeavors going on that I do encourage you to learn more about. Here in yoga, we're learning more about the world around us and more about the inner world also. This eightfold system that we are learning about and relating to our true creative selves arises from the yoga sutras. And for beginners, we recommend the Sachi Dananda translation of the sutras out of Yogaville, um, light blue cover with the Swami. Swami's photo there. Lots of great teaching stories. Non-religious, some of those teaching stories mention God, but that is speaking of God as you understand divine reality and not religious dogma. If you follow a religion, this fits. And if you don't, that fits as well. The Eightfold Path, as we've discussed in previous weeks, begin with the restraint of harm through truthfulness, non-stealing, non-grasping through continence or balancing our energy. The second limb is cultivating health and purity through contentment, effort, self-study, surrender to a higher reality. And the third limb is asana. So we did a little asana activity last week and we're playing with asana today as well just um looking at the body so a lot of the time we think of asana as uh as poses yoga postures you know bhujangasana shavasana we we know these these postures as asana but asana is the physical help practice physical attention and goes far beyond just a yoga pose practice as we're relating asana the limb of asana to our creative selves this week we're considering how our bodies are continually talking to us and some of what that communication from the body is offering is a direct experience to reality to ultimate reality whatever that might mean but the body's not really thinking about stuff the body knows the body knows when it's hungry the body knows when it's tired the body 
is continually communicating with us. So through that direct experience, we gain access to an understanding of reality, understanding the nature of the divine self, the soul, the creative self, whatever that might be. And uh, speaking of selves, Lee, we saw you hop on here. We're glad you're here and, uh, and happy birthday to you. We are glad that you self are here and exist. Thank <laughs> you. You're I'm welcome. sorry for coming in late, but thank you. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, you're welcome anytime, anybody. Hop in when you can. We're so glad, so glad to see you. Um, yes, now this, this idea of the body communicating with us, offering wisdom, is that if we're thinking about mental health recovery, which is another thing we're doing in this group here, right? Mental health through yoga, through expressive arts, then sometimes the content of our thoughts can support that mental health journey, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. We can use the power of the mind the Upanishads talk about this, the Bhagavad Gita, the sutras as well. We can use the power of the mind to steer ourselves towards truth, but the default of the mind might interfere with our mental health. The traumatic stress symptoms or other mental health symptoms tend to alter our thoughts. We might even say warp our thoughts away from reality. One of the, so Trauma does all kinds of things to us, but they divide those all kinds of things into four symptom sets. And one of those four symptom sets is negative alterations in thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. So the, the mind really can work against us. And what a gift that we have yoga to teach us how to harness the power of the mind for our clarity, our well being, our creativity. Um, it, we were talking about this, we always do a little check-in before we start the recording and, and the voice of the naysayer did come up the way some of our thoughts will interfere with that peace of mind. And that thinking part of ourselves, the naysaying part of ourselves can really disrupt our creative endeavors also. So as we're talking about the body today, there is this opportunity for us to lead with creativity and not, uh, and not our fears, our concerns, our doubts, our judgment that can so often occupy the mind. So this activity from chapter seven, Yoga for the Creative Soul, is connecting to our nonverbal wisdom, getting analysis out of the way and just enjoying what creative leaps might come. So not a new idea in this group. If you play along with us regularly, you hear us talk about the non-dominant hand and how the non-dominant side of us can sometimes offer some breakthroughs, offer some approaches that or insights or techniques or outcomes that we might not otherwise have access to. So to begin, I'm going to ask that you come home to your body just through a little bit of movement, whatever movement your body might want today. Just, oh, I always like to do as I was taught to do the five directions of the spine, forward, backward, lateral, revolving, and upward or lengthening, really lengthening in both directions, five directions of that spine just to mobilize and feel the after effects you can get through those uh, those five directions pretty quickly I just did uh, good to see others of you continuing to enjoy that and if you're watching the recording pause it here um, take a few minutes really luxuriate in movement and coming home to the body then when you return to us notice what other awarenesses have arisen as a result of coming into the body and offering it a little bit of space, a little bit of movement. Grab your creative implements. A lot of the time I say, do what you want, right? Dance, play your musical instrument, write a scene, write a dialogue, write a descriptive paragraph or a poem, 
but for today, I ask that you pick a nonverbal modality. So if you're writing, let it be gibberish and, uh, and not words. Music, dance, drawing, all those things are great. If you're doing movement, lead non-dominant. And if you're drawing or doing, doing something in a visual capacity, we're just going to take the dominant hand, place it on the small of the back. And give ourselves a few breaths next week. We're talking about pranayama, energy and breath. That's the fourth limb, but we can feel ourselves breathing into the back of the body. Or if you can't feel it, just imagine that you're feeling it. Breath into the back of the body, breath into that dominant hand. And let the dominant hand really relax. So I've turned my palm around, my palm is facing outwards. It's the back of my hand that's on the small of my back. And I'm just letting my fingers kind of curl and soften back there, letting the palm soften. And I'm saying, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to figure this out. You don't have to get this right. You don't have to jump in and fix it or make sure it's okay. It's already okay. And then imagine the line to the heart chakra. So the palms are often associated with the heart, heart in hand. Uh, carry the energy from your palm up your arm to your heart. And then make that connection across the body, down the non-dominant arm, down the non-dominant hand. If, uh, if dominant hand wants to help, it can give a few little brushes, but it certainly doesn't have to. And then with your non-dominant hand, very gently, you can place it over your eyes or just over your forehead or the top of your head. Feeling comfort, feeling ease, feeling kindness in a two-way connection, non-dominant hand and head or face. Inviting the presence of your creative self into your body into this creative space, this creative moment. And then grabbing a nearby implement and just letting that non-dominant hand move color across the page. And what we're watching for here today, how this might be a little bit different from what we've done in the past is that we're noticing when the mind says, oh, I should use this color now. Oh, I should draw this figure on this part of the page. And we're just gonna say, thanks for the input mind, but that's not what we're doing right now. And instead go back to our sense impressions using our eyes if it's visual, using our ears if it's musical, using our kinesthetic sense if it's movement, and going to what is feeling best, sounding best, looking best as a next step. So maybe the brain says, oh, it needs this color now, but your eyes fall upon your palette of colors, and the body prefers this color instead of what the mind said. And so we proceed that way. The body prefers this movement instead of what the mind thought might look or feel best or make the most sense. And as we carry forth with this activity, we're continually noticing the way the thoughts dictate the process, whether they're positive and helpful or whether it's thoughts of the naysayer. We're noticing them. However, we are creating from the not thinking place, creating beyond words. Creating from a realm of sensory, kinesthetic, experience.
Is your breath a tool on this journey? Does it change the way your body relates? Does it change your sense impressions or what's happening in your mind when you check in with your breath? You might also notice changes in the internal environment, the state of mind, the way the mind speaks, thinks, suggests, plays along, the more you connect to your body. Similar to meditation, it will sometimes increase, get louder, speed up before it settles and quiets. Like cleaning out a closet, it sometimes gets messier before it gets organized. Our, our mind is often the same. So we're not trying to change that. We're just continually acknowledging and returning to what the senses are requesting, guiding, suggesting. I'm not hearing any sound issues come through. Yeah. No. If you are watching the recording, I encourage you to carry forth with the noticing. If the cues are helpful, rewind the video a little bit, re-listen. Otherwise, pause here and take your time, as long as you need, to play with this. We'll carry forth before we wrap up the video. If anybody wishes to share what appeared in the absence of intellectual guidance, in the absence of the naysayer giving feedback um, before we close today. Just want to give folks a chance. Hi, Karen. I see. I see color coming this way. Um, hi, Erin. So, I. My mind totally forgot that I had taken notes <laughs> to, on your earlier discussion. So I just went for it and with my left hand and just did the movement as you were guiding us. And um, then I wanted to really add the green. Um, I'm into green, green is garden. So just um, added some color blocks and then my little dog was helping. So I did a little left-handed sketch of her. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Lovely. So I just kind of just let my left hand do whatever. So this I felt like was my victim that was kind of trying to come out and I was kind of just using my gentle, gentle pink to just kind of say, no, this is, that's what it just, it started looking like to me. So mm. thank you. Thank you, Kate. And nice reminder for all of us to be gentle with the tenderest of places. Yeah. Yeah, so I got 
I started to <laughs> feel kind of maybe hopefully you can see it. So I started drawing a bird and then I didn't like the bird. And then I went, well, wait a minute. Like, why am I so worried about the bird? <laughs> like, why is it so important for me not to fail? And then I named him Freddie the failure bird. And I decided to, you know, really think about about that, right? So what if what if failure, how much is failure keeping me from doing things? And what would happen if I didn't care about failure or if I couldn't fail? So it was really helpful because I don't think I would have gotten there without the left hand, right? Because that was that that made it, you know, not pretty. And um, that would that it, it came up against a real wall for me. So thank you. So now I have Freddie the failure bird. <laughs> He's, he's all of our totem. He's all of our totem. I'm so thrilled to finally be failing. You guys know that? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like, whoa. Very, very, uh, very big breakthrough. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, truly, that whole what's so important about question as we're examining our psychology is a useful one. Just for the reminder. Dean. Hello. I, uh, I have to get some colored crayons or whatever. But all I all I did, I just had a pen and I closed my eyes and, and tried to give up control, but I uh, had had a hard time with it though, because your mind's always coming back, but it was it was kind of a fun exercise and looking forward to getting some uh, color. Mm, nice. Yeah, and um, Dean, is, Dean is springboarding a little bit into something that reminds me to say to everyone that sometimes when we do this nonverbal, non-dominant handwork, because we're knocking at the door of the places that are beyond our verbal access, it is sometimes a process. So if things keep coming up over the next week or two, I invite you to return to this or any of our other creative activities and let it flow. So not, not speaking to Eugene specifically, just that as you were, um, as you showed your drawing, it reminded me to tell everyone that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're in a process, aren't we? We're in a process of connecting. We're in a process of enlightenment. We're in a process of understanding our creative selves. Was there any leak? Yes, hot. similar to Dean, I, well, I, I didn't look and I only used what I had right in front of me, but I didn't look at it. And it was very freeing to just draw without looking. And I, I realized how much my mind wanted to, to see, but I kept like kind of encouraging myself to just draw. And I found the repetition was really, um, maybe there are so many things going on lately that the repetition was very soothing and made me think of things that I like I, I was knitting a year ago at this time and I like the repetition, but I'm not doing that right now. So certain things, um, yeah. So it was a kinesthetic activity, but by not looking, I wasn't judging what I was doing and allowed me to sort of just be with the feeling of the movement. So, yeah, thank you. And nice to see so many of you who I haven't seen in a long time. <clears throat> Thanks, Lee. We're glad you're here. Hey, Donna. I wasn't going to do this because, it, you know, it's hard for me to make sense sometimes. This was with my eyes closed, going back and forth, just doing whatever. Then when you suggested another color, I did go for another color. And I made started making these kind of shapes. And admittedly, these shapes are quilting shapes that I use in my sewing. So I was like trying to let that go. I was trying to make this uh, using my left hand. Still, all of these shapes. But in the end, where is it? In the end, my last part was just let it go. This is my gibberish. All of these were trying to make things with my left hand. And of course, I realized what I was doing. So then I was able to just surrender 
to doing just gibberish, just instead of making something, you know, something. Mm. It is the visual equivalent of gibberish in some ways, isn't it? And gibberish, ugh, another rabbit hole, but they've studied gibberish quite extensively. <laughs> it's very interesting. So I love, I love that. I love that parallel. Thank you. And thank you for sharing. And they, hi, George. Hey, I don't know if this will show up. It's pretty light pencil. I don't think it will, but in, my mind is at the ocean all the time. And lately, we haven't, well, every day I look for the whales and I don't see them. But recently, just this week, I think we saw dolphins sounding very close to the edge of the beach that were really pretty and just just so fluent, just like a, a dance. It was, and I haven't seen dolphins for a long time. We used to see them all the time. But then I but then I remember, and I was gonna say some earlier when Florange was talking about the hawk. We have, I have, uh, I have hawks in my backyard, brown hawks, and um, I, I'm pretty sure we have a baby hawk who was at the bird feeder the other day, which I haven't seen a baby hawk, and it was just so tiny, but, but, but majestic, so I just love, um, I don't know, the backyard's great with the garden and stuff. I don't know if it's a good thing to have the feeders for them though. But. <laughs> oh boy, nature. With a cat, so. I oh, got it. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Thanks for sharing that. I always feel like when you folks share your stories, then I get to experience it too. So now I've experienced a baby hawk and that's pretty magical. Oh, your sound's not coming through for some reason. Oh, you're muted. That's why. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for sharing your non-dominant, non-verbal creations. Thanks for letting your bodies talk today. And thank you for letting us live through those creative expressions. Um, Flarange, we, oh, we lost her. Hmm. Well, we saw Flarange playing her violin with her non-dominant hand today, and that was inspiring as well. Please do, whether you're watching the recording or whether you're here live, share to the group, reach out to me privately with any questions or sharings that you're a little shy with. Um, if you're interested in signing up for the, hmm, roughly every 10 day communications that I send out every couple of weeks with, um, more ideas for mental health recovery through yoga than PM me or comment to the video. Thanks everybody for being here and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 1230. All the best everyone. Take good care. <laughs>